Hey tubers, welcome back for another adventure. I bought this engine at the garage sale at Stormville. I believe it's for a snowblower, right? The plug-in electric starter kind of leans it that way. The lack of an air filter, right? Normally um, um, snowblowers don't necessarily have air filters. Also the kind of belt drive it has on it. This thing has a 7 8 inch shaft. It is overhead valve. It's a Briggs and Stratton. I'm thinking it's probably, I don't know this, but I think it's probably a uh, 7 horsepower, 6 or 7. That's my guess. So anyway, let's go with that. What I'd like to do with it is get it started. So while I was at the flea market, I checked to see if it had compression and you guys could hear it has that. Once again, an engine without compression is known as parts. So, um, well, let's check the oil. See what it looks like. It looks like there's oil in there. So that's a good sign. I don't know where are we. Yeah, I think yeah, it's part way up the stick, about a half an inch on its way up the stick. So I think the oil's good. So I'd like to get this thing started. I have um, my little gas tank. I'm going to kind of put it on here, see if we can't get it to inhale some gas. I'm not going to redo the carburetor or anything because, quite honestly, I don't plan on keeping this carburetor on here. So I fed it some chainsaw gas. These are, by the way, known as tattoo bottles. They're tattoo rinse bottles. So we got the gas line on. I used chainsaw fuel because it happened to be handy. I tightened that one up. That one, it's just kind of hard to get to. So anyway, I'm going with one of them tight. Hopefully that's good. The choke appears to be closed. We got the electric starter rigged up. Let's see if she'll start. Well, it goes around fast enough. Let's give it a little hoot of starting fluid. I got it right handy here. Just a hoot'll do ya. Well, it starts. Um, to be honest, it actually sounded pretty good. I didn't hear any any uh, bad sounds and it didn't smoke right you guys don't see any puff of smoke blowing around here so i think this is a rock solid engine when i was a kid i used to love finding snow blowers in the salvage yard because your typical snow blower i mean around me here maybe you get let's say on the outside five snows a year and it takes the average person an hour or two right so five times two is 10, even if it's 10 years old, right? What does the engine have on it? A hundred hours, barely broken in. So um, I used to love to find snow uh, blower engines, snow thrower engines. The only thing that's concerning me a little bit is a seven eighths um, drive shaft size. I hope I don't have trouble getting a centrifugal clutch or a torque converter for that. I know they come in half inch. I know they come in three quarter inch. I don't know about that. This thing might end up on the lathe getting turned. More work. Anyhow, my plan for this thing now is to make it more cool than this carburetor. So let's get this carburetor off. So the carb is off. They got this little block thing here, and 
Now it's just a matter of smashing this on, but it doesn't go. So we're going to have to create some more spacers. So I drove out to, I believe it's Pleasant Valley, went to Duchess Metal Supply, and I picked up this aluminum. And the plan is to make some of these. Now when I look at that, I'm looking at three holds basically on a straight line. And if you take out your caliper and measure the outsides and then the insides of those two, right, and you use grass paper, this guy you set up first right in the center, then you set out the two outboards and that line and that line those are the centers for those two so all I basically have to do is transfer that onto this drill a bunch of holes do a bunch of cuts and life is good once one has the center of those right you just transfer them to this right with the punch and then it never hurts to kind of double check yourself make sure things look centered right there it's hard to tell with this one. Oh no you can see it so anyway just time to drill a bunch of holes right drilling them with a drill press they come out better um, neater <laughs> less uh, less uh, twisted about um, Anyway, I'm going to drill these with a regular drill, and I'm going with an eighth, eighth inch to start. I find it better to drill the holes um, first before you cut things up and typically drill the bigger ones first. Okay, now to put this all together, you could see the aluminum one I built. We got a brass one right. You can't have any air leaks. <laughs> so please, as you're stacking these together to build a carburetor adapter, remember, no air leaks. Anyway, I have it set up. You could see I used the old gasket material there. And I'm just... Right, I put some on there. We're going to put this right on here and smash it down. The side toward the carburetor, I always just oil that. That way I could get it apart. Right. So the way this works is this actually goes into that. I have the bolts upside down. But it uh, looks like it's coming out far enough where everything will go together, everything's going to work, and life will be good. Here we have it. It's all rigged up. You guys could see I used hex bolts on it. Much easier to put on, especially if you use the uh, ball drivers like that. Right. Um, just, just a lot easier. Uh, anyway, it's on there. We got the choke on, got my bottle of gas that I'm like dripping all over the place. Really, uh, really smart when you're starting an engine. We got the electric starter set up. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to push the button, but I need to get this on a tripod, right? I can't hang on to it and hang on to the camera all at the same time. I think you guys could see enough to make it interesting. So here's my sketchy throttle that the cable is too long. It's a 
and make sure it's got gas. Choke is on. Obviously the idle needs to be turned up a little bit, but that would be perfect with the torque converter or anything because idling down that low means the, um, the torque converter will not drive. So I accomplished what I wanted to do. I bought a snowmobile engine, $30. I got it running and I hacked a uh, PC27 carburetor on it. We should make this an ideal mini bike, go kart, or whatever um, engine. I still have the recoil intact plus the electric starter, so I think I think this whole thing was a success. I put the ten dollar carburetor on this thing that I was having trouble with on um, on the uh, ATC 200M, and obviously the carburetor seems just fine. Um, Eventually it'll run itself out of gas, but I'm sure you guys don't want to watch the video for that much time. Anyway, I really, really want to thank you guys for dropping by to watch and comment and subscribe. Whenever you can find a nice snowmobile engine out there, especially the um, overhead valve, whether it's a Briggs or a Tecumseh, they make real nice mini bike engines. This one seems to, what, you see no smoke, right? Nothing. Right? Even uh, gunning it up like that, you know, she's idling down real good. Uh, by the way, if you do this hack, a lot of people don't take the governors out. And that could be a big problem, because typically you got a plastic governor wheel with metal weights that are on pivots. When you're screaming this engine up and down the road at five, 6,000 RPM, those metal weights could come flying off that plastic wheel. And uh, let me give you a hint, they're gonna hurt your engine on the inside. They're gonna find something to break and they will break it. Anyway, I really wanna thank you guys for dropping by to watch and comment and subscribe. Please remember, feet down, heads up, and get out and enjoy each and every day. Bye now.